Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I greet you all according to your time and locations. Thank you so much for tuning in. Yes, my dear viewers, I am back again with another update. So guys, I have a video here I would like we all to watch. But before then, if you're meeting my channel for the very first time, you're highly welcome. Please kindly do well to like, share and subscribe. Leave your thoughts about this video in the comment section. Let us know what you think about this video and I will see you towards the end. Begin what's trending. The House of Representatives on Tuesday asked the federal government to lift the ban imposed by former President Muhammad Buhari on the supply of petroleum products to stations within 20 kilometers of the country's land borders. The lawmakers passed the resolution during plenary session following the adoption of a motion presented by Adeboyega Ishaka from Ogun State. While moving the motion, Ishaka argued that the ban should be lifted because petrol subsidy has been removed, adding that the continued enforcement of the ban is causing hardship to millions of Nigerians living and conducting businesses within the affected areas. In the meantime, the acting controller general of the Nigerian Customs Service, Wale Adeni, on Tuesday acknowledged that despite the removal of petrol subsidy, full smuggling through the land borders still persists and that complete eradication of full smuggling may take some time. While speaking to the State House correspondents after a meeting with President Bola Ahmed Tinubu at the Asorok Villa in Abuja, Adeni also clarified that not all Nigerian borders that were closed by the Buhari administration have been reopened, adding that while selected strategic borders were reopened in 2022, several remain closed pending review. If you remember that uh, the borders were completely shut down uh, 2018 up until 2021, 22, when some selected uh, strategic borders were reopened. That is still the situation as we speak. And this was why we had uh, uh, an ad hoc arrangement of uh, a special unit uh, coordinated by the office of the NSA to enforce that border closure. But as we speak, uh, about five of them have been reopened. Four were initially reopened and two more were opened after that. And that is still the situation. There are ongoing processes to review this situation against the objective of the border closure itself. In some border uh, areas, we had reports of uh, seizures of uh, uh, fuel, and uh, that is what we had. We have seen that uh, they are still smuggling it across the borders. The rates at which this is smuggling, uh, being smuggled has reduced considerably. Well, we are seeing that despite the uh, subsidy removal, false um, smuggling persists in land borders, as the Controller General has said, and that was one of the measures that, you know, President Mohamed Buhari had put in place. Well, in another development, former presidential spokesperson Femi Adeshina has reacted to Bishop Matthew Hassan Kuka's comments during the 60th anniversary celebration of Afe Babala's call to bar in Ekiti State which he stated that Nigeria witnessed the ugliest face of corruption during the Buhari administration. Bishop Kuka had also accused Buhari of developing just his hometown of Daura in Kastina State, insisting that Kastina enjoyed development over time, owing to the fact that it is the hometown of the former head of state, which does not speak well of democracy. While reacting to Kuka's comments in a post on Twitter, Femi Adeshina stated that the bishop was simply pained. He wrote, who listens to that bishop again? He's still paying that he got no under the castle patronage from Buhari, unlike in the past. As he they paying them, he they sweet us. Well, let's take a listen to Bishop Kuka before we come back for a discussion. We have seen the worst face of corruption in Nigeria. Femi Falana, my friend here, will speak about that because he's published a series of articles, uh, you know, talking about, about what happened under the Buhari administration. They were not the ones who caused corruption, but I think in the last administration we saw the ugliest face of corruption in many, whether in moral terms, financial terms, or other terms. And I'll mention that before I close. The sad story, let me put it that way, the very fact that Daura has had the opportunities that it has had, it has never had since its existence. And that even Katsina that is next door has not seen the development that has taken place in Daura. Nothing personal. 
But just to say that we cannot run a skewed country, a country with such skewed opportunities and privileges, and pretend that we're in a democracy. All right, Rafai, you know, Abusha Kuka has been a stern critic of uh, the Buhari administration and the president himself as well. Quickly, uh, everything Bush Bishop Kuka said was correct. There was accelerated development in Dara because of President Buhari. A lot was taken there, and a lot of people kicked against it when it happened. And for Mr. Femi Adishina that says, do people still listen to Bishop Kuka? Hell yeah. Of course. Bishop people are, Kuka has been a voice in this country for over 30 years, Absolutely. and his voice is louder than Mr. Femi Adishina's voice, obviously. Let's not deceive ourselves. And what he said is right. And please, when people give feedback, let's stop criticizing them and say they're not getting castle privileges. Where was Mr. Femi Adishino? When Bishop Hooker's church was attacked in Kaduna during the De Debra crisis, all right? When all, what all are the things he had gone through? Where was he when Bishop Kuka had to sit on that Oputa panel for reconciliation of this country? Where was he then? Let's call it speed a speed. When people criticize government, you take the meat of the criticism and move on from it. But anyway, Mr. Femi Adeshino is doing his work. As regards uh, the, the National Assembly members, real quickly, yes. And uh, GNI, uh, I, 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 I think, uh, GNI, uh, as it's fondly called, being an Isiaka, we'll definitely talk about that because he represents a, senator, a, a house of rep zone from a border area, which is Yewa. And a lot of people have been inundated with that crisis since there was a ban on taking petrol yes. products to filling stations around the border. But now that we've removed subsidy, I support that motion that it should be cleared out. But you see, the smuggling will continue. You know why the smuggling will continue? Because the big men that do the smuggling have not been apprehended. It's the big men. How do you and I will not have the money to be able to drive four, five, seven tankers over 33,000 liters across the border and sorting out customs and the likes. So customs, too, should shun corruption within and be able to clamp down on these people that smuggle our petroleum resources. And it will continue. Why? Because the arbitrage is there. Despite the fact that we are selling over 500 locally, when you still go to other African countries like Niger and the likes, it still weighs six, seven hundred. I think I was in Abidjan the other day, and I think petrol goes from between six fifty to eight fifty CFR, and that is per liter, and that is even more than how much it is sold in Nigeria because the CFR is more than the naira today. So as long as you still have those arbitrage, you are still going to have those differences, and it's still going to be problematic across the border. So that's that about it. Customs should shun corruption within, and the new controller should do a lot for them. All right, Doctor Martin. Okay. Well, the uh, proposal, which had been uh, endorsed by the House of Representatives uh, from uh, Honorable Wega Isiaka, representing Egbado North Imekwa for federal constituency, uh, you know, is in order. But it should not end with his own constituency. He is from Imekwa for, which falls within, you know, the radius of 20 kilometers uh, to the border. There are other places that are affected too, people living around Badagri, and also in the northern part of the country. Now, in 2019, when the president said, don't take fuel to within 20, border, uh, 20 kilometers to the border, uh, this was because of uh, you know, the smuggling that was very rife at that particular time. But now that fuel subsidy has been removed, it is only fair, and it is in order that the House of Reps is now recommending that, look, Take fuel to those places because those the owners of those fuel stations they are doing businesses. The people who are buying fuel in those places they are Nigerians. There is nothing in the fuel subsidy regime that says that some Nigerians should be excluded from what other Nigerians will benefit. However, the counterpoint is the point made by Wale Adini, the acting controller general of customs, that there is still fuel smuggling. Yes. Uh, but that they're going to put a system in place to continue to check that. And that nobody should expect that fuel smuggling will end overnight. That it will still be there. But what, what he has observed is that there has been a very serious reduction in the scope of uh, fuel smuggling across the border. And well, that's understandable. But that review that they need to do would, should take along this recommendation from the House of uh, Reps so that nobody feels left out of Nigeria. And it is very curious because, again, part of that review, they need to monitor the waterways. Because some people, we understand, you know, go to Badagri, take uh, fuel from Nigeria, and cross in boats to neighboring uh, West African countries. Even now, that fuel subsidy has been uh, removed from Nigeria. And despite the fact that, in as far away as uh, Cameroon, 
some uh, motorcyclists were carrying placards saying that uh, Pres yes. President Tinubu should not have removed the <laughs> West of City in a year. Imagine yes, how serious the dilemma is. Nigeria introduces a I policy. Mean, <laughs> People are carrying placards in Cameroon. Yes, so, Cameroon. But we hope that, of course, you know, all the other associated issues in terms of you know, the interests of all citizens involved will be addressed. As for Femi Adesino, he says who listens to that bishop again? Well, people are still listening to Absolutely. Bishop Kuka every Sunday, every morning. People troop to his church to listen to him. He's head of a whole uh, uh, diocese. If people are not listening to him again, why did they invite him to come and speak at uh, we the at the sister's <laughs> anniversary of uh, uh, you know Chief Afe Babalola? They even invited event. him to the Asorak Villa before Buhari so, left. So well, I yeah. bet you know uh, Femi Adesino well. He and uh, uh, Bishop Cook, they will make they up. Will make up. Absolutely, they will yeah, make, so after all, the, the job has ended. He too has moved on to something else. <laughs> but Bishop Cook will still be there, right. you know, whether anyone likes it or not. Uh, and uh, we must all tell ourselves, the assessment of the Buhari administration, as is the case with other administrations, will continue. Nobody can dictate the perspective, you know, um, and everybody should have their say. After all, he was president of all Nigeria, not uh, president of Asurok. He was president of... All of us, including okay. Bishop Kuka, and who has a right under the Constitution to express his views. Well said, Dr. Bati. We'll take another. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. How on I see the video? Wait till I think about this video. Make sure I leave in a thought for the comment section. I'll see you in my next one. Bye for now.